What up YouTube? This is Woody coming back with another mother loving moto vlog. How's everybody doing today? I don't really have a, a couple little things to talk about. Nothing too big, I don't think. Check this out. Sub delinquent key tag. I uh Ordered his, ordered his new shirt, five years of mayhem. Got that tag free. Reset my trip. Hold on. I get about 200 miles on a tank. It's pretty freaking good. Anyways. So, my newest, uh, I got my first, I think it's my first, uh, copyright strike on a video. I got a copyright strike on my, uh, ride review video of the 20, or, uh, 1290 Super Duke cracks me up I think it's hilarious that uh, a company it's a company uh, WMG I think it's what it called WMG I think is what it's called but uh, copyright strike against my video because of the music in the intro of my videos so I don't I, I didn't originally know where the music came from or if it ha was copyright free or not I had no idea uh, I had made a little intro or a trailer video for my channel and a friend of mine went and took that video and threw in some of his editing and uh, added that music to it. And uh, so I didn't really know, nor was I, I mean, I really wasn't worried about it because I'm not monetized. So it's not that big a deal. There's nothing to do about it because I'm not monetized. So it means absolutely nothing. Now, if I was monetized and they did that, they could, they would earn all the ad revenue from my video. They would, they would get the money from that instead of me. But I'm not monetized, so yeah, I'm not monetized, so. Uh, there ain't no money to be made. So it's kind of stupid. It don't make no sense to me. I like... They must just be... That WMG must just be... Uh, frantically running around on uh, yeah, YouTube. Um throwing out copyright strikes against people or something they don't have enough time to look into look at like investigate it all before they do it it doesn't make, it cracks me up because it's just a waste of time for them like anybody that knows anything about YouTube knows that my channel in it can't be monetized like it's not eligible for, for monetization so, there ain't nothing they could do, really. And it got me thinking, like, uh, what I could do, I could put any music I want. You take, you take the most popular song out right now. I don't know what it is. But if you took the most popular song out right now, and I made a video, and put that music in that video. 
title my video, the title of that song. And there, I mean, they could do a copyright strike, and I could, and I wouldn't have to fight it or nothing. I could just let it go. It's not going to affect me, and they ain't going to get anything out of it. <laughs> and so it's just a big waste of time for them. But how it would help me out is I could do that solely to draw people into the channel. You see what I'm saying? I could do that and get away with it and not get like in any kind of trouble or anything because there ain't no money involved. It's funny though. It cracked me up. Like and the video itself only has it just broke. It just broke a hundred views today. Like, it, it hasn't even earned. Come on, guy. It hasn't even earned enough views to make any money at all. I tell you, it cracked me up. It's hilarious. But it just got me thinking about that. I think I uh, talked about it in my on, in a previous video a little bit, but like it got me thinking about that again. I'm like, I could, I mean, I could use that as a way, like anybody could, not just me. Anybody that's not monetized, they could. You could use that as a way to grow your channel. Then what you do is monitor, grow your channel and then monetize your, uh, monetize, get your monetization and uh, you can pick and choose what videos you want monetized and what ones you don't want monetized. So, I mean, you could uh, grow your channel, monetize your channel, and then start monetizing your videos and just leave those ones that would have a copyright and, and strike or would gr draw a copyright strike against it, just not monetize them. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then there ain't nothing to be done about it. It's funny though. I got the email yesterday and it said something about you're not in trouble, just that uh, you got a copyright strike against your video and it tells you that uh, any ad revenue that would accrue from the video would go to the perfect person that owned the music, but there ain't no... <laughs> There ain't no commercials to uh, earn re ad revenue to from, so. <laughs> Funny. But, it's Friday! Woo! <laughs> I'm on my way to work. It's Friday. Beautiful outside. Uh... Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's funny though. I th I'm really contemplating doing that, but I mean, but at the same time, I don't want to. It's not the way I want to grow my channel either. But I draw people in that way. But it's a way to draw people in. If you got a channel and you. If that's the way we want to do it. Man, I've been, uh, I've been, uh, shot looking at a lot of bikes online here lately. A lot, a lot of bikes, man. The more I look at them, the more, the more I get 
confused by how these bikes are priced and stuff. I mean, it just don't add up or make any sense. I was on, uh, for some reason I went on the Honda, oh, a guy in my chat on Amino app uh, was talking about, thinking about getting a uh, Honda Dual Sport. And, uh, and I wasn't sure what it looked like at first when he said it. So I got on their website to look and see what the bike looked like. Then when I was on there, I started like looking around and I know they're coming out with that new, uh, the new CB1000. Uh, it, I think it's a 2018. So it's supposed to come out this year, but it still hasn't been released to the US yet. So, and I don't think it's supposed to, to this fall. When I was looking at it, it was pretty sweet. And the price on their website was like 12900 and something like that. Which, it's like, it's basically, it's got the CBR 1000 RR engine in a stripped down naked bike. And got all the electronics and tech in it and stuff like that. It looks like a pretty sweet bike. It's kind of a retro, but not retro cafe style bike. I don't know. It's it's a naked. It's got the big round headlight and they call it a Neo bike. I think that's what they call it. Like a Neo, Neo bike. I don't know why, but it's like a future or a modern uh, retro, I don't know. It's a pretty cool looking bike. Anyway, the price is, it's, on the website, it's priced at like 12 9 or something like that. And then some of the other bikes I've lo been looking at, naked, as far as naked bikes go, are less CCs, less tech, but fairly close to the same amount of money. It's kind of, it just, it's weird. I don't understand. Bike prices are crazy, let me tell you. If you're looking at bikes and checking out prices and stuff like that, it's crazy. How, it's so weird, it's crazy. It's all over the place. Um, like that bike I'm talking about, that CB1000, it's uh, 12999 or something like that. Uh, brand new uh, Street Triple 765 would be the same price. It's like 12100 or something like that. And that's like 200 and some CC smaller. It's a smaller, that's a mid-sized bike, mid-sized naked versus, uh, I don't know if the CB1000 would be considered a hyper naked or I guess one would be a naked sport, one would be a super naked. But it doesn't make sense to me that those two bikes would be the same price. Or, uh, let's see, what else? Um, the uh, Z900 RS, which is a retro style naked bike, and it's priced at 11,000, right at just above 11,000. Like, that's only $2,000 away from the CB, which has got 100 cc's more, gobs of tech in it, all kinds of tech in it, where the the Z900 RS, all it has is ABS. That's it. It cracks me up. It just, it just I just don't understand. I don't understand. It, it don't make sense to me. 
smaller bikes, less tech, and it's priced at about the same because of retro styling. Not because it's a better, faster, or even comparable bike. Or the uh, straight triple, like that's not even a comparable bike. Like they, they're probably equal to the same amount of tech in them. With a lot less power. Like it don't, it's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy to me, I'll tell you, it's crazy. I'm trying to think, of, I'm trying to think there was another one. There's more, it just, it cracks, it's just, it's weird. It's a crazy time to be looking for a bike, I'm telling you. With the prices all crazy and like that. You don't even, really don't even think about it until you start looking at, looking into them and stuff like that. I think it's, uh, it's ridiculous. Bike prices, they're just ridiculous. But. And I still don't know what I'm gonna get. I thought I wanted a Harley. But the more I think about it, do I really want that big uh, loan, that that big monthly payment? Uh, I'd rather, sometimes I think I'd rather have a cheaper bike. So I'm not paying so much for it. For one, payments are gonna be lower. And, and then I can afford to do stuff with it and to do stuff to it. I don't, I like, if I bought a Harley, I, I don't know how I'd be able to afford to like do any mods to it or anything like that with that big a payment. But I still want, the, my main thing has, is I still want a bike where I can ride my wife with me and she can be comfortable on it. That, that's the only thing that hasn't been changed and everything else I keep changing my mind about. Do I want a naked? Do I want a cruiser? Do I want the Harley? Do I not want the Harley? This uh, Mustang's pretty cool. LX351R. Never seen one like that before. That's pretty sweet. Anyway, these are the these are the struggles that I deal with <laughs> in shopping around for a new motorcycle. Crazy prices and uh, and what I actually want in a long term next bike. If you got any suggestions or any comments to make, please leave it in the description below. And I'll catch you on the next video. This is Woody. Peace and I'm out.